Thank you and welcome, right? Welcome to this very joyous occasion where we are formally launching Learning Festival, a dream come true for 11 people, 11 professionals from the learning and technology space who come together to launch the series called the Learning Festival, right? Something that we put together for a very interesting reason. We were just another group of friends who used to connect on WhatsApp, we used to Zoom call, right? Because the COVID was on, we couldn't go out and meet people. And then we had this spark that we could, you know, probably try and learn from this COVID, right? Try and share each of our strengths. And we started getting into small presentations within the group. Those presentations really took off very well. And that's when our key brain behind this entire effort Balakrishnan, Venkatakrishnan, Venkat, right, who is uh, actually called Venki by the rest of humanity other than me, I think, right? Venki said, came out with this wonderful idea, let's do a learning festival, let's get international speakers of repute, let's connect them with Indian audiences, and let's make a difference in people's lives. Let's do what is needed in the geek economy, right? So let's do things for the geek economy, let's do our part, let's not get negative with COVID, let's ensure that this becomes a platform where we learn and from that uh, learning you know we get into a whole lot of knowledge and with that knowledge maybe earning opportunities come our way that's when these 11 people decided to ensure that we get got into exciting you in order to engage you educate you and to finally empower empower you so without much delay let's get into a small promo film on the learning festival auspicious start and all of you who sat through this entire break right are actually going to be really really gifted because we're giving these 11 people who came together and ran a series of talks among us right we've decided to give you a gift for attending this festival and for the fact that you've sat through the interruption which just came about because we'll be giving you a wonderful book that all of us put together from our talks this is the book that we will be launching Right? It's called Entrepreneurial Insights. It's an e-published book. And each of you, whether you like it or not, whether you're going to read about it or not, are going to be dumped this one e-published book. Right? You guys have no choice but to receive it from us Right, and make sure that each of you find the time. It's a very interesting read. Just 30 minutes, 10 of us speaking, 10 of us you know, compiled our thoughts from what we spoke, three minutes each read. You could have a whole lot of insights starting from Design thinking done by the expert Venki, right down to a whole lot of topics, right? So this is all about us. The we've just launched the Learning Festival. We're all good to go. And we're now good to go to that one big thing that we've all been worried, waiting for, right? We've all been waiting for the big talk, right? The big talk, which we've actually been waiting for by Florian Ebert, right? Florian Eberhardt. Right, like I said, a much more handsome, smart guy than me. So the next 30, 35 minutes, 40 minutes, you're going to see a smart guy on screen. He's a serial entrepreneur, right? He's a sought-after keynote speaker, right? He's a startup mentor and the founder of Start Your Sales. He's a LinkedIn growth expert, right? He personally coaches, trains, and consults for a whole lot of founders across Europe each year at accelerators such as the Founder Institute, Startup Wise Guys, DB Mindset Above, and a whole lot of things. Right, so friends, uh, this is the COVID world, right? So you're not supposed to have a social contact, social distancing is the key. In normal times, I would have said, let's put our hands together, right, for Florian, but that's not allowed. So even your hands can't touch each other. So I'm going to say, let's put up our hands for Florian, everybody. Can we put up our hands? Let's see 
everybody. Let's put up a hand for Florian. Florian, the floor is all yours. Let's take over and get us into brand building with LinkedIn. All right, now it works. Great, welcome everybody. Thank you, thank you for that wonderful in introduction, Javi. And thank you for uh, for that honor to be the first guest on the on this amazing idea which came into fruition now through all of you guys. I think this is a wonderful idea, and I'm just honored to be one of the first uh, or the first and and speak in front of all of you guys. Um, yes, thank you, everybody. Um, so I would say I'm gonna share my screen. Everybody can hear me, see me, hopefully. If not, uh, raise the hand, but I think it should work. So let me share the screen and I'm gonna um, give you a little introduction into um, what we're gonna talk about today. So everybody sees everything? Great, cool. Uh, no. So yeah, um, what we're gonna do today, I mean, um, Jabby already mentioned it. We are in very, let's say, unusual times today. And uh, we don't know really how things, how the economy forms globally, because this, this whole COVID affected us on a global scale. And um, so there's a lot of changes happening. There's a lot of unpredictability. And what, what happens is we, are, we don't know actually where we go. And I built this this talk, this presentation with that in mind. And in order to give you the best perspective that I learned from interviewing hundreds and hundreds of founders and applied towards the platform of LinkedIn, because this is a very, very powerful platform. I personally work with it since, since a lot of, a lot of years, I think around seven years already, I'm working with the platform and I have hundreds, if not even thousands of founders uh, using that platform correctly. So let's let's get straight into it. Who am I and why am I doing this? So um, uh, Jabby already introduced me. I am I was I would say I'm a, I'm a very diverse guy. So I, I was um, having a very scientific education and I studied physics and then I moved on into business, into sales, entrepreneurship. And uh, but I applied always these these um, problem solving skills I learned from science towards business and that that helped me a lot throughout the process and there's also some some things i wanted to share with you for this so um who am i i am i'm a, a mentor i'm a founder of, of multiple startup projects i helped a lot of b2b companies startups to really get their sales going and scale their companies um on a on a, on a, on a ma massive level um Started out just as as everybody or most entrepreneurs in, as a career in sales, and I was just doing uh, simple cold calling just from from on the floor. And then I, later on, uh, once I got good at this, I managed the whole team, and then I went um, doing my own startup projects, developing um, some apps, and like spreading it, growing growing the the sharing marketplaces and so on. And then I moved on and saw really there's a there's an opportunity, there's a market need for startup founders, but also for seasoned founders to, to, to grow more and to use startup methodologies to, to, to scale their businesses. And this is, this is where I really specialized in. And then I focus more and more on LinkedIn because this is one of the best platforms in the B2B space, or if not the best platform uh, to, to get this going. Some of the bigger brands uh, we work with as a, as a company, as Saudi Sales, uh, you might know some of them. I think they are quite uh, quite known, but we work from the from a bigger scale. Here, as you see, BMO, Yahoo, Japan, uh, SoftBank, IBM, and also we work with smaller, let's say SME like companies with just a few million revenue a year. But also, um, I have programs for uh, smaller, even starting out entrepreneurs. So there's it's it's a broad range there. So um, let's talk. Let's go right, right into it. I will roughly talk about. Roughly 30 minutes, then I would be, then we would have a Q&A session. So there you can just shoot in questions towards me and um, happy to, happy to um, reply them. I think uh, Benki is moderating these. And um, yeah. 
get started. And really, and what works is actually social media is a point with what really works because we most of us are home or at least more bound. And, and um, we can't really go out, we can't really go to networking events. We, uh, social interaction happens is social media. So now there's a bunch of social medias out there. Uh, we all know the biggest, so I don't have to repeat them, but there's only one platform which focuses really on B2B. And this is LinkedIn. And this is, this is where I specialize on. And I talked over the last two months, two, three months, I interviewed like on purpose hundreds and hundreds of founders, which went through crises before. And I asked them, what, what, what did they do to, to overcome, to make their business overcome these crises, to get out of these crises even stronger? Like entrepreneurs uh, in, in the Silicon Valley, which overcame the dot-com bubble um, in, the, in the early uh, 2000s, then 2008 uh, um, crisis. And what, did, what characteristics, what traits did they have? And I just wanted to bring them right now uh, up on here. And uh, these are... I would say the common denominators I found there, which are highly important to overcome these crises in a, in a profitable way, actually, or in a, in a good way. So first, you have to, this is, it's a free step, actually. First, you have to fr- really, like, get rid of this fearful mindset and just, like, become clear, relax, don't watch too much news for now, and just, like, clear your mind and just focus and see what's going on in the market. What is going on? Not affect, not not depending on your business, not not depending on the product you want to sell. Literally just loosen up for, for all of these. Become mindful. Medi- maybe meditate before. Maybe uh, maybe do do some other things. Do some sport, and then just go into observation mode. And you see, okay, this is what's going on. This is what's going on. This is what's going on. Without any judgment. And then you see, okay, well, this is this is what's working, and this is what's not working. And social media is definitely something that's working. LinkedIn is definitely something that's working. Building a brand, building actually a personal brand on LinkedIn. All what we're going to learn today is actually what's working. And then have this mindset of extreme adaptability. You got to be able to adapt your mindset, even if you have a product that you sold, a service, um, an offering that you sold, and it's not working because right now there is not the need anymore. Is there a way to adapt this? Or to adapt like the processes in, in, within the business, and adapt the first in the mindset, and then speed of implementation. All these three things they can be applied obviously to business, but particularly here I brought them up because they should be applied always towards any social media platform. In this case, towards LinkedIn. So observe what's going on, because social media platforms are evolving. They are evolving fast, and they're gonna evolve faster and faster. It's exponential technology. So you constantly get to observe, and then you have to adapt. Okay, this is what's working, so adapt. Well, this is what's working, not anymore, adapt, and really implement that. So this is, if you take one message out of it, the learnings you get there, implement them. And don't be afraid of, oh, I might make a mistake, I might make a, a, a failure or whatever. No, the, the, the speed is so much, and it's it's actually exponential. So what happened yesterday, what happened a week ago might be already forgotten in the, in the whole info, sea of information. So these are, this is, this is one of the biggest thing I want you guys to, to, to take out of this. So now let's talk about LinkedIn, the platform LinkedIn and my understanding of LinkedIn. And I really analyzed this. They see they have brought the, the scientific aspect, the scientific thinking in there. Um, I look at other platforms, which already been there and I, and I, and I look at, and I, and I, Think about, evaluate how they performed, how, through what phases they went through. And the same th- phases, obviously, LinkedIn goes through as well. So LinkedIn, before this whole COVID situation, was, when it started out, it was simply a resume CV platform. That's it. You put your CV up there, was online, and um, people, your employers could see them. You could find employees there. And um, it was basically this, nothing else. An online resume platform that's it so now more and more people jumped on upon it it was in the early years and then it became obviously because they had a lot of data of these employees and job titles and positions and so on and became a, a database of 
information which salespeople, especially in B two B space, could use. So when I started out, we were like cold calling companies. We were cold calling businesses, and、um, my way of figuring out who they were, I was looking them up on LinkedIn. So I, I cold called them, cold called the reception, and I thought, okay, this is the person, this is CEO, this is a, the, the responsible person there. So I, I'd like to speak to this person. So I figured out the name. That was the only usage of within sales、uh, we had back then, and then. They obviously picked up on this, and then they developed certain platforms upon LinkedIn, upon this database, and that's where they introduced the Sales Navigator, which is basically a whole platform on top of the database for salespeople to do more relationship management, to to better sales, basically more individualized sales. Then, obviously, LinkedIn developed more and more; they got more interaction and so on, and now. LinkedIn is right now where Facebook was roughly five to six years ago. So Facebook, let's let's have this little excursion here. Facebook five to six years ago was at a point where they obviously they they, they wanted to monetize more. So in order to monetize more, the platform needed to have a lot of attention on the platform. This is their currency. The longer the people stay on the platform, the happier the platform is because the more the longer ads. Views basically they can generate, and the more ads they can actually sell. So, so what they were doing, they could they didn't create content their own, so they were promoting content creators on the platform Facebook. And back then, five to six years ago, you could really see a lot of content creator got a lot of organic free reach, and they got really big. A lot of influencers, a lot of brands got mostly personal brands, obviously because it was B two C, got created out of that, and. Then, as this this evolved, Facebook got more and more views, got more and more content creators, and they so slowly vol,、uh, zoomed down or yeah, volume down basically the free organic reach. So people didn't have that much organic reach anymore, and they had to pay in order to get the same amount of reach. So today, in order to get the same amount of reach per post on Facebook, you need to pay for pay the ads basically in order to to get the same reach. So now the same thing happens to LinkedIn. LinkedIn is like, okay, we want to make more money on on advertisement, so we need to get people more on the platform and stay long, keep them longer on the platform. And this is what you could see within the last one and a half, roughly two years,、uh, where they were promoting a lot of content producers. Everyone who produced content got massive organic reach. It's still the second biggest social media platform,、uh, or the second. Uh, um, biggest re- organic reach on a platform you can actually find beneath TikTok, obviously, but it's a completely different audience. So you can, if you post right now, you can find out within your network a lot of people see it. If you compare the same post on on Facebook, like prerequisite is you have the same amount of activity level because the algorithm evaluates, and I'm gonna dive into that in a second. Um, you see, you get much more organic reach there. So this is what what was happening now. Um, that is a limited window of opportunity. Obviously, they will zoom it down slowly, and you have to have to pay to get more,、uh, get organic reach. So that's why I really, I really want to, want you guys to understand. If you want to build, if you want to use this, this is an opportunity. If you use this for yourself, for your brand, or for your business, you should start posting right now. You should start posting regularly right now to 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 get the algorithm algorithm geared towards your posts. Obviously, providing value with your posts that you will you will gain more reach and build the brand. So now, enter the pandemic. Everybody's at home. Everybody's locked in. So people are more on a platform. Content producers, including myself, doubled down on the content they produce. People jumped on it and say, like, okay, let's produce more. So obviously, the market like gets more saturated. The whole process gets accelerated. So. You have a massive organic reach, and it's a, it, it's actually a limited window of opportunity. The cool thing with LinkedIn is they are highly active B two B user bases. You find as well also mostly people also on Facebook, yes, and it depends also a little bit on 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 the geography. But the mindset counts what people do on the platform. LinkedIn is still very business. So if I go on the platform, if I ask ten CEOs, ten senior executives. What did you on a platform? Oh well, they are in the business mindset. They think about networking. They think about inf- informing themselves about about the the, the industry news,、um, and that's it. They think business.、In、Facebook, it's not so much business. 
So this is this is a shift there. And you can target them much better. So it's still the best place to get straight to business leader, especially, especially right now when we are in into social dis- distancing. So now I broke down for you what I've done in the last two years where I focused solely on training and, and like really training senior executives, build their profiles up, training their training their building their brands and, and helping them to generate leads through the platform, through content, through brand and through uh, active outreach. So I really bought that that experience of running thousands and thousands of different campaigns and, and helping thousands of, 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 of senior executives with their profiles uh, to these three bullets, these three points. And they I wanna I wanna share them with you. If you just take these three things and implement them, you're already ahead 80% or 90% ahead of everybody else. Uh, seriously. So what you got to focus on in order to get business out of LinkedIn, your profile, that's one thing, because LinkedIn focuses on a, um, there's a business page, yes, which will become sooner or later more um, important, but your profile is still a human to human interaction. Human to human, it's still a social media. So they promote the profile a lot. Second, content. What do you create? How do you act? And third, sales process. So now, why these three things? Hmm. Well, yes, my background is sales, so I try to combine marketing and sales as good as possible to get the maximum results. There's a lot of influencers out there. If you look at other platforms, again, if you look at Instagram, there's a lot of influencers out there which have influence, they have massive following, and they're great, probably great content, but a, a, a line share of the people who had hundreds of thousands or millions of followers, they don't have a proper sales process. Brands with, with, with so many followers, they don't have a proper sales process. So they don't properly leverage their, their, their influence. And they leave dollars, they leave money on the table. And then there's other companies, and I work with them, B2B companies, B2B star fast scaling B2B startups, they focus solely on sales process. They have great sales people, great sales engineers, and they just go out and just like push it, push it, push it, push it, which works. Obviously, they scale through this, yes, but you constantly have to put in energy and, and energy, and you don't build something. If, if something like this, if, if something breaks away, uh, um, then everybody has to look, okay, we have to change strategy, whatever. However, they don't have... A they don't have an authority which comes through profile and content. So if they would build the same thing on our authority and invest there some in energy as well, the both thing, this is actually what works. So these these three pillars are, is the best breakdown I've found so far. If you focus on profile, great content, and have a proper sales process or funnel in place, then you make you 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 get the most out of the platform. Now I'm gonna guide you guys through this. So first profile. What's the most important thing to pay attention with your profile? And I broke it down. This is how I call the profile funnel. And first off, before I start, I want you to change your mindset towards the LinkedIn profile. I still see it, and it's it's still most people still use it wrong. You might the most people's mindset is, oh yeah, it's a resume, it's a CV. My LinkedIn profile is a CV. Even if they might not think anymore in that way because they actively network, they still build up their profile, including CEOs. A large share of the CEOs still build up their profile in a way like they want to get a job. But if you're a CEO, you want to represent your company. You want to, you're the, if you decide so, you want to be the face of the company and you want to promote this. So you want to promote the company and promote the brand. And even if you're um, head of sales of a, of a company, CMO of a company, you really want to represent the brand. You don't want to sell yourself in terms of of uh, um, getting a job. So change that mindset to from a CV towards a landing profile is from now on and continues to be more on a landing page. So if you engage with people, if you if you reach out, if you create great content, people land on your profile. And then they should get a glimpse of, hey, this is really good. This I, I need this, and then they start reaching out towards you. So if you have this mindset shift, now let's talk about this funnel. First, you have the cover photo. 
There's a big banner in the background. Everybody has it. Unfortunately, still most people don't use it. This is free advertisement space. So you can use this banner for advertisement. You can put up, if you want to promote yourself as a speaker, my case, for example, and I'm going to show you an example soon, put yourself up there in a speaking position. If you just want to promote a brand, you, you just do the brand, but you can put a call to action and a, and a text up there. Photo, your photo should be clear, friendly, approachable, and then the headline. And I'm going to show you an example soon. Then once you've done this, this is the main, the main building block. And then the about section. The about section where you should really start value setting. And I'm going to talk about this in a sec. And then at the end of the about section or in underneath a clear call to action, book a call. Let's do this. DM me, message me, a clock if you want this. This this should be there. So now let's talk quickly about value selling. And I see it a lot of people um, do, doing it still wrong, even seasoned entrepreneurs. They talk about their product. They talk about only what's what's uh, what a product can do, their service can do, and they only talk about the features. So. Now imagine someone, or I really want you to imagine and, and put yourself into the shoes of someone who needs maybe a solution you provide, you can solve, a problem you can solve for them, who needs this, but reads this, oh, this feature, this feature, this feature. Is he, if he's not yet educated that actually these features help him to solve this problem, he will not figure it out. He will not grasp it. If he's already educated, he still needs mentally do this step, the next step, oh, yeah, actually these features, they help me to solve the problem. No, I want you to make it even easier for them. Think about what is in it for them. What's the real value you deliver? And write it in these ways. You're solving this problem. I always have this analogy. Customers are here and they want to get there. And I want to, I, I can help them. I am the bridge. My, my offering is the bridge. So how do I bring them from here to here? And this is what I'm going to write about. This is where they want to get. And then once they get it, all right, this is where I want to get. This is where you can help me with. To get, and then you talk about this is how we're gonna do it, and this is what you should do in the about section. Now let's let's show you some examples. This is a, a screenshot of my current profile picture. As you can see here, background picture, a picture of me speaking in front of an audience. What does it communicate? Subconsciously, subliminally, it communicates. Well, this person speaks in front of people. He has an authority. People listen to him. That's basically it. So that's what I wanted to communicate here. And I wanted to show and, and, and prove this, that I'm doing keynotes, giving keynotes. But then as well, I have a logo up here from, from my business and I have a, a tagline. That's it. You can use it. You can, instead of a tagline, also do a call to action. Another example. Dave, um, he's an amazing brand builder in the B2B space. So he works as a CMO for Privy. And he has a tagline, a company name, and a call to action. That's it. That's something you can do as well. If you can do some references here, that works as well, really well. Obviously, if you if you get features in a magazine, something with name, that helps as well. Now, the other thing. You got a profile picture, you got your name, and this is your tagline. Standardly, LinkedIn puts a tagline as position at company. That's it. Well, even if you're a CEO of a company, if your brand is not big, if your brand is not global or like not an all all known known um, not in all minds, people will like okay, there's everybody calls himself CEO on the platform, so it doesn't really stand out. I don't know what is it, so I don't really get it. And these things, these three things, picture, name, and tagline, will be seen in also viewed sections, or will be seen if you search, if you use the powerful search of the database. So here you can actually write your one-line pitch. What is the one-line pitch you have? So he, I gave, gave you here a few templates. You can just one if you don't have it yet. So title at company name, our task niche. There is important to be specific because with LinkedIn, you're going to enter a global market. And the more specific you are, the better you know your niche, the better it works. And then with Unique selling point. This is how we help them. Another way would be do that would be it. And then this is important as well. 
linkage to use them for go and put up link services. Still a lot of people are using, obviously, here about section. Quick hint on the about section. Don't, don't do block text. It's going to read it. People are skimming through your profile. You want to make it as easy as possible for them. My rule of thumb is write it for an 11 years old. That an 11 years old can understand, that's it. So now this other example, Dave, he, he had this other framework, Chief Marketing Officer Preview, B2B Brand Builder. That's what he's doing. And he's great in it. He's, he's, he made a big name out of it. And he has this, this background picture. So much about the profile. Hope that hope that already gave you this this already gave you the, the main things you should implement right away that will already set you apart from the average LinkedIn user. Now let's talk content. Obviously, you have a profile, and well, LinkedIn is a great way also to do sales to reach out actively. Well, if you reach out actively and um, people don't know you, you reach out to them. And you know you, they might go to your profile. You have a great profile there. Yes, great. However, if you have proof of concept, if you have great content, maybe some case studies written in the content, maybe some testimonies written in the content, providing great value, they will check it out. If you add them, if you connect with them, they will see the content. And you can literally easily build a following there of people who are engaging with it. And this is saying the average salesperson follows up four times okay the average salesperson and the average the average client or the average contract gets signed after 12 after the 12th touch point so most people stop after the fourth and the average like like no wait 80 percent of all the sales there was i got it wrong pardon me 80 percent of all the sales of of, of qualified prospects they get, get closed after the 12th contact point. Most people stop after the fourth. Well, there's a big gap. So if you have a team of salespeople, just tell them to follow up more. Another way of doing this, because every touch point works, even if you do ads, if you're retargeting ads and so on, another way of doing this is literally just creating content because people get across, come across your content and you will have more and more touch points and they're much more likely to buy. It takes a bit to pick, to pick up, but once it picks up, then you have constant flow. People will recognize you. It's still so much easier to close. So now let's talk about what works and what doesn't work. Okay. So LinkedIn, when it started out or initially, they had this micro-blocking platform. You could write articles. You still have it. You still can write articles. Long-form articles, similar to Medium, which is another platform, or just, just a blog, basically. And uh, it worked great. But they changed the algorithm, and now, since a while, they promote more and more posts, almost out of posts. And uh, the whole article thing is more or less not that effective, effective anymore. Unless you have a very engaging audience, then you still get traction, but you still get more, much more traction with normal posts. So I'm a big fan of focusing because you can do a lot of things and uh, you're not move. But if you focus on one thing and see that works, then double down on this and you're moving faster. Again, startup methodologies. So focus on article uh, on posts and I'm gonna show you some examples of my post. So here, this is a post uh, I, I wrote and here's, you can see it's time for innovation, empathy. Let's work all together to get through this time. Leverage the up so people think, all right, uh, it's interesting, let's click more. This obviously stands out as well. If you can upload a PDF with some kind of value, that works as well. This is this is an example of a, of a, of a really good performance. Create value. Do short posts. Again, write it for an 11 years old. Again, I, you see here I have some spaces. And write a catchy first line. It should stand out. People see this and then they, you want to entice them to click more. The first two lines should actually only the goal should only be that people click on the see more button that's it and you want to create some curiosity obviously through this what works really well are stories any types of stories you put that works pretty pretty well so now another one and here we have actually our example with focus this was a this was a, an experience i had um and i just want to share the story and i put it in a very lofty lofty easy to understand um kind of almost really engaging, almost poetical way, and it performed really well. 
and I added this picture. And uh, the the moral of the story was is basically this: what I'm going to share with you today is all right. Focus on one thing and double down on it. So you're going to move. If you spend your energy on everything, like on you can, there's so many social medias on it. If you spend your energy on all different things, you're not going to move. So focus on one thing, double down on it. If you see it works, and then you move much, much more. Now, what else? Simplicity works. And again, like even if you're if you're founder, if you're CEO of a big corporation, you don't have to spend hours and hours and hours of doing that. Like my process, obviously, I have a team. I spend roughly five minutes of creating content per day. That's it. So this is, for example, a really, really, uh, really simple one. Beginning of the year, I wrote uh, 20 things to have a really, really kick-ass year. And I just wrote them down in my phone as notes. Took a screenshot and posted it, added some things there, wrote, performed pretty well. So simplicity, something actionable, actionable advice. And you want to, this is a mindset shift here, you want to document. I see a lot of people, especially if they're senior and they, they, they think, all right, I have people looking up to me, like I have to already know it and I have already stand, always stand to my, to my opinion, cannot change and so on. But this is, this is holding you back too much in order to create more and more content. You should start documenting. Start thinking in terms of documenting. This is what I did in this post. I basically documented what happened to me. Even if it was a failure, I shared it, but I afterwards I took out of it what I learned and maybe something better came out of it, you know? So I documented and I and this documenting process creates authenticity and people love to see it, love to read it love to to listen to it and you have plenty of great examples for example if, if, if some of you are into podcasts there was the major the biggest podcasting platforms uh podcasters interview style podcasters just um had an exclusive deal with spotify and he like he just went on spotify and this this guy joe rogan he basically just he basically is super authentic there's a lot of flaws about him a lot of upsides about him but he's just authentic and people love it Obviously, I don't, I don't ask you to be that much, but it's a, it's a mindset shift. At, at least it's worth to look at it and see, like, okay, what can I take out of a, from it for myself? So much about this. So the most important thing is get it done. And we have now 159 people on here. It would make me really, really happy if all of you or the majority of us create, takes this advice create one post after this this learn festival see how it goes because you want to get it going and you want to stay lean and act really fast so now let's talk about the last step which is sales process well what is a sales process a sales process is where people go from from zero from someone they don't know from prospect qualifying them through all the steps towards paying customer all right and the sub steps towards it are the important factor and the numbers or let's say the, the the conversion rates between these sub steps sub steps are what you should track so this is an example sales process if you don't have a sales process properly and i talked to literally hundreds and hundreds of companies and they say like yeah we do this and then we have a call and then we do this but yeah um or this and we have one meeting and then it's very weak, and I want you to rethink it or tell your head of, head of sales to, 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 to give you the information, how they are doing it, and rethink it. Question it. What are the individual steps? And the more detailed you make these steps and the better you track between, the better you know. This is the number one reason why a lot of businesses went out of business during this COVID time. Because now, all of a sudden, okay, the economy obviously um, um, goes down. So we have we have a problem there. There's less influx generally. Um, it takes longer. The sales cycles are longer in general. So, but if you don't have a proper sales process, if you just do prospecting and then closing, if you just track these two things, and then it's like, okay, my sales went down. Well, if I ask then what happened, then it's like, all right, my sales went down. So what's the what doesn't work anymore? And if you really know what does not work anymore, then you can focus only on this and can fix it. And if you don't have a sales process which is detailed, you cannot track this and you're just in disadvantage. So that's why I'm so big upon the sales process. So here, simple steps. If you don't have one, implement this one. If you have one, 
maybe improve it or, or keep it if it's work, working. But the important thing is that you have one and track. So first would be research. Obviously, do market research. You see where your prospects are, uh, how you reach them, on maybe on a platform, maybe on other platforms. Uh, what do you do? How, uh, which part of the day you reach out to them? All these, these these research you should do on a regular basis. Then once you know you build lists, you find them, you start reaching out to them. You start like engaging with them, and you prospect. And a certain amount, a certain percentage of these, you. Like say like all right interesting let's have a demo let's have a let's have a sales call tell tell me what it's about then a certain a uh, certain percentage of these you obviously qualify them within the call within the first presentations you will pitch you will say all right look this is what I have to offer for you and then the objections come and now you got to handle these that's is objection handling phase and then only a certain percentage of these you will close. And once you know these numbers in between, the conversion rates in between, between these, then you can say like, well, now COVID hit, um, what happened? Well, for us, for example, we had, we had, we had basically here between four and five, we had a drop. So what happened is people were more reluctant to spend money right now. So they had more objections. They were like, okay, they don't have, they don't have money. And we had to find out ways to fix this. And we saw, okay, this is it. So we, Focus only on this, fix it, we got back up our, our revenue, and that's basically it. So if I wouldn't have this, this process, I might have still sales, sure, but I was like, okay, it doesn't work. So I had to really nail it out. I had to do much more work in, in advance. So much about sales process. So if you don't have one, or if you have even one, focus again is the most important things. This is what you always should know. This is your core metrics. Because this is what really, really counts in terms of sales. The numbers of sales conversation you had today, this week, last week, last month, you should have it top of your mind. If not, you should, with one click of a button, you should be able to know it. This is, this is my opinion. I think companies and leaders, business leaders who know this and have these numbers at the top of their mind, they are much more successful. And then how many of those did close? If you have these numbers, then because only what, what get measured progresses. So if you know these, you know how to how to fix it, you know how to improve it. This is this is the focus about this. So well, what now? Let's talk a little bit about the three categories of people, of companies I work with, and that works really well. Obviously, there's there's service-based businesses which are selling done for you services. That would be agencies, marketing, real estate, financial advisors, all service-based businesses. They are really big now on LinkedIn, and they're, they're working really well they're getting business on LinkedIn. Then product business, usually uh, SaaS technology companies, software, but also information products like myself or physical product. If you if your audience is on there, and then third, consultancies, consultants and coaches, which are selling certain consultancy services, um, the retainers, whatever, one on one coaching events and whatever trainings so these are these are the, the 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 pillars we work with and these are the pillars which we found uh the business works really well there so now i talked to plenty of people during these during these uh these times and i found some interesting observations which i want just want to share with you and this is the last the last slide for now so what i found is is people companies businesses who freeze right they watch news they watch they drawn into social media they just consume and they drop into inaction and they blame what happened to the economy and then there's businesses people with a mindset who expand and they say like well this is actually time to double down on what works and what works is social media what works is linkedin so double down on building the brand if you're not making more sales immediately you will build your pipeline and once your economy gets again back up, you will have more leads in the pipeline and you will start closing more and more. If even if you don't make any sales, you still build your brand. Brand building is really a big thing. That works right now. You can build your brand by giving out value, by giving out value for free, even people towards your, your prospects, need your customers, and then they will recognize you. You already hit these 12 touch points beforehand. And 
you start expanding once the economy um, gets back up. Great. So now I would say, let's talk strategy. Hey, Florian, that was fantastic. Uh, that was really precise, really insightful. I think those are the comments coming up in the chat box, right? Precise was a word which came up a lot, right? Absolutely nice. Friends, uh, uh, so once again, uh, in these times of social distancing, we're moving into Q&A, Q but before that, I thought uh, we should say a big thanks to Florian for that wonderful presentation. So in these times of social distancing, no putting your hands together, even your hands have to be away. Can we do that, all of us? Get back onto your video, and can we do that for Florian, all of us together, right? Can we, I'm not going to say hear it for Florian, but show it Florian, right? In good times, I would actually ask you to even give a standing ovation, but I know in, in, these, in, the, in this period of uh, Zoom calls, I really don't know what you guys are wearing below the waist. So I'm just uh, most of us just wear something on top and sit down for call. So I'm not going to risk that, right? Uh, friends, a couple of things that I should remind you about. I'm going to request each of you to go out there because, like I said, this is just the first episode in the Learning Festival. So I'm going to request each of you to go out there and write about what you heard, write about what you just saw, right, on your Facebook page. On, on Twitter, you know, wherever it is, you know, check out our YouTube video as and when it comes up. We also have a, a feedback form that you will need to fill up. You know, we'll send out a WhatsApp immediately after this with the link, right? The link is right here. So please use that WhatsApp link to give us your feedback. It's important to us to know the kind of speakers that we need to bring, right? To ensure that more and more appropriate stuff brought to such wonderful listeners you matter the most to us. Right, you are the first set of audience for us, and we've got people. You know, among the eleven of us, we've got the best. Right, we and it's fantastic. We sent out one seventy-five tickets, and my uh, team tells me that we have one sixty-three people who are attending this right now. Right, which calls for another celebration. Can we do that? Right, such a huge, huge number of people who are attending. I, I'm generally told that the percentages are fifty, sixty percent from those who register to those who actually land up. But we are talking of close to 90% plus in this case, right? So like Florian said, if there is one thing, I'm sure not all of this makes sense to everybody, but if there is to pick up and put to work, I think it would have made up. Now, before that, also tell you that the more you write about us, the more you stand a chance, because Florian has been very nice enough to give us 10 free one-hour sessions with him, right? We would be choosing one-on-one -on -one 10 people, right? And then giving you, uh, Florian, don't look stuck. Yeah. You did offer of that, right? <laughs> right? Uh, uh, you know, there'll be 10 people who would be getting free one-on-one -on -one sessions where you can work on your LinkedIn pages, right? Work on how to cost and, and put more processes in place, right? So write more about this festival, speak more about this festival, and make sure you're one among the 10. Let me now move on to the question, right? Because this is interesting, and this is going to be the core of the session. Florian very sweetly decided to keep the presentation down to about 30, 35 minutes so that we could spend a whole lot of time discussing stuff. The first question I'm going to throw up is from Varsha. Now, Varsha wants to know, and it is a bit away from what Florian was speaking, Varsha actually wants to know, and which is why we thought we'd start with this question, how effective is LinkedIn for B2C selling, Florian? How, how would you answer that? How effective is it for B2C selling? Great question, Varsha. Uh, thanks for asking. So... It is effective if your people are on there. You want to reach out. Uh, you you want to you want to um, basically like target. So there's a bunch of B two B company B two C companies which are using LinkedIn to uh, um, for ads or also like for other marketing purposes to to get customers. So what usually works is again think of the mindset. Like you can answer this question for your. I don't know exactly what product you're selling, but for your for your industry, if you put yourself into their shoes, are they using LinkedIn? And what is their mindset using LinkedIn? If they might be, well, right now they're in home office maybe, but if they might be in office, more in office work related things. And if you sell an office chair, which is B2C, or well, it can also be B2B, but it's B2C mainly, or a new keyboard or mouse or whatever, um, you can promote it there. And so so think of what the mindset is in there. If it solves a problem they might have while they're in their working mode, and or if you can align it in that way, then it works. Fantastic. Thank you, Florian. That was nice. Moving on to the next question from Mr. Swaminathan V. And he says, uh, what should I do to increase my SSI? That's an interesting question. Great question. Thank you, uh, Swaminathan. Um, do create 
Update your profile, like I just gave you the steps for the profile funnel. Update the profile, this is the first thing. And then figure out who um, who's your target you want to reach out to, uh, target for your, your prospects, and reach out to them. Increase your network. Engage with them. Chat a lot. Use the chatting function a lot. Maybe do half an hour, one hour of LinkedIn per day and do that on a regular basis. The more regular you are, the better. This is what the platform likes. That is great. Half an hour or one hour of LinkedIn and every day. It makes a lot of sense, right? Now moving on to a question from uh, Saumya Narayanan who wants to know, it's a very generic question. She wants to know how does one promote one's business effectively? That's the question. Only. Great question. So you have the business page. Don't neglect that. LinkedIn just released some, uh, some features where they might be more and more important. Right now, but though, still your personal profile is more important. So create a, the, the, the corporate page, invite all your network to follow it and so on. So you have their base. Create the posts on your personal page and how to promote it effectively. Obviously, you have the outbound and you have the inbound. Inbound is obviously done by brand building, by content. So this is taking a bit of time. It can take months, yes. So in order to get it fast, um, you obviously have this half an hour, one hour LinkedIn every day where you create content, but also like reach out to people, constantly reach out to people. However, relevance is the important one. If you just reach out randomly or do an automation app and, 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 and create, create reach out to some irrelevant people and they neglect it, LinkedIn might block you. And this is not good. Be relevant. This is what counts. Try to be relevant and take your time. Reach out to 20 people a day, maybe even more. Like start slowly and but be highly focused, focused and provide value to these people. Hope that answers the question. Wonderful. Uh, thanks, Gloria. The next one is by somebody who's like a mentor to many of us, to Keisha. And his uh, question is, uh, how does one avoid the trap of being me too when it comes to brand positioning or LinkedIn? Authenticity. <laughs> I, I grasp on it. So there is no, there's no competition if your brand is authentic you will have you as a person obviously we are most of us i guess are entrepreneurs or business business leaders we all are constantly working our personality to become better so now you have a certain set of values by which you live by which you hopefully bring within your company and 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 educate the people who are working for you so if you are Propagating these values and putting it in the product, putting them in, in the work with the clients, and putting them also into content and creating authentic content, you will not be a me too brand. Right. So the mantra there is authenticity. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, he'd like to know what should be the ideal uh, frequency of posts? Great question. So the more the better. This is the general thing. I would. Like if you have the time, if you can create valuable content, post every day, maybe even twice a day. This is like a, like a top, top level. You can also do more, obviously, but this is like really good. But if you say, like, ah, I don't have that much time, I want to really be effective, 80, 20 and so on, um, post four times a week. Because every post reaches its peak of viewership after 1.5 days. So if you post every four, roughly four times a week, you will maximize the post views. Obviously, if you post more, you will have maybe a little bit less views per post, but you will have more overall post. But like four times a week is, I think, um, something everybody can do, even with like five minutes of length in a day, um, if you just put your mind to it. And again, the posts don't have to be that long. You can just share some things. If you have systems in place, that's definitely doable. Right. So the key insight there is every post which is its peak exactly. in one and a half days. That was a very key insight, right? The next question is from Rekha Kumbar, who, again, I've been seeing her, uh, you know, moderating a whole lot of sessions during this uh, COVID period. But she's got three questions. I'm going to go with one. What's the difference between start a post and write an article, other than the restriction in the number of words? Between start a post and write an article. So this they're safe in different sites on the platform. One is you have a, more or less a type timeline on your platform. And then you have a posting with your with articles, which is basically a blog, which have you have attached to your profile. Articles they don't perform that well because the algorithm doesn't push a lot of organic views on there. You have to promote it yourself. Posts will be promoted through the algorithm. So my recommendation is for now, 
focus on the posts. Obviously, you have less words, but you like if you can create value there, focus on that. Okay, so Rekha, uh, Florian says focus more on the posts. Moving on, Mr. Anand from Seachain Consulting, he wants to know, uh, can I buy, should I buy Sales Navigator? Good question as well. So Sales Navigator, I'm not sure if the prices are different on different continents, but I think in Europe it is right now, um, or in Germany, it's uh, 79 euros or roughly 80 euros uh, per month. Um, it can be an investment. If you're saying you want to double the function to a lot of prospects and you need the filter functions, they have you have some increased filter functions there, like company headcount and so on, recently funded accounts and so on. If you really use it actively for sales for right now, then uh, then uh, I would recommend um, to use it. However, there's a free trial to it, so try it for 30 days. And if you, if you get it going and uh, use the free trial, like use it a lot and, uh, and you, you, you can use it. You have a better filter function. You can reach out to more people. So LinkedIn is a little bit more lenient with that because you have a maximum number of reach outs. So don't go over that. And um, yeah, try it. If you actively focus on sales, then... Of course. Fantastic. Thanks. Uh, one interesting question is coming from a location, right source. Uh, he says he wants to know everyone is into LinkedIn laying and you know, sales. So how seriously does the potential customer consider the sales pitch on LinkedIn? Great question. That changes over time. So a year ago, LinkedIn was not that heavily. It also depends on geography. Uh, U.S. it's obviously heavier used as a sales pitch. Um, the more marketers jump on it, the more people pitch on it, the less effective it becomes. Same with emails. If you do email marketing, you will know. Like the conversion rate just drop. Same happens to LinkedIn as well. If you are creating good, uh, creating value, if you stand, if you make manage to stand out, and if you target right. If you're re really relevant, then obviously yes, it makes sense. Like I, like ninety ninety percent of my business comes from outbound, uh, not not that anymore outbound only, but comes from from LinkedIn. So and we are pitching, yes. And uh, what helps is if you provide some kind of value in, uh, upfront in terms of an article or whatsoever, or invite to something. Fantastic, thank you. I don't know they like to know, I sales pitch to someone new. What's more effective? Uh, you connect with the person on LI and send a personal message or just send them an email with the sales pitch or the deck? What works better? Email or in-mail? What, what is it? Email. email. Okay, email. Okay. Um, you can do both. I'm a, I'm a big fan of multi-channel. Um, you should not just read, connect, and, and pitch them. That that's not unless you really kind of outside of the platform know this is relevant for this person. I don't do this. I wouldn't do this. Um, build the relationship first, and then once you have like a few messages back and forth, you can say like, "Hey, let's have a conversation about this and this if that's interesting for you." So, um, what is more effective? It depends. I, uh, there's no real. But LinkedIn works better if you st first start building a relationship. It takes a bit more time, but it's more effective. Lovely. Uh, this is an interesting question from GB. Uh, he wants to know, does image with content have more reach than content alone? So it depends on what you've done before. Look, again, put yourself always in the shoes of the consumer. And since we are producers and consumers at the same time, you usually... Most people use their phone using LinkedIn, maybe some still the computer, and you scroll through your your feed. All right. So anything that stands out that piques your interest works. If you have an image that's not good and doesn't pick your interest and you don't stop, it doesn't work. But if you have an image that kind of stands out and you have their their, their content, then it works. But it's the same you can apply to to content. There's no it works. It also depends on like how the algorithm picks up your um, your, your, um, your your profile and, and your network on. I mix it. We have really good results with just content alone, but you should mix it up. That's the best um, strategy I found. Mix it up. That's the key word there, right? Now, 
our uh, co-founder and actually pretty much the brain behind this whole thing, right, Benki, uh, he would like to know how would the LinkedIn algorithm treat posts with an external link? They don't treat it really well. So again, keep in mind what is LinkedIn trying to achieve. So what do you want? This is this is the number one key set which I'm giving away to all, like only actually with my inner circle clients. But I I think this is really relevant, and the more people understand it, the better the quality is. So what is what you're trying to do is you obviously want to provide value towards the customer, towards the user, the reader, but as well you want to provide some value to LinkedIn. So what is the goal of the user, of the of the end customer? What's the, what's the goal of LinkedIn? Ideally, they are aligned. So LinkedIn's goal is to keep people longer on the platform and to be pre um, uh, relevant. If you're relevant, this is this is this is the fact. If you're relevant, then this. this so, um, Bala from Deloitte would like to know, uh, at what point in time uh, does it become a profile gets branded as a thought leader, right? Where does that... Uh, a hard lead. Well, hard lead. Yeah, a thought leader. Have, a thought leader. Thought leader. A -O -E. thought leader. I see. Okay. From then or in general, like from other people? <laughs> this is a good question. I mean... Uh, well, LinkedIn has a certain number of influencers, which you you have to get LinkedIn reaches out with you uh, to you if you like if you have a big brand. Obviously, they prefer a lot of the Silicon Valley uh, leaders there. I would just say, so you can LinkedIn reaches out to that. This is I would say relatively um, hard to get to, but you can become a unknown, less hidden uh, micro influencer status there. But the algorithm just kicks in on you if you have a lot of lot of reach. Like I would say, with your comments, uh, if your if your posts reach um, regularly into the thirty to fifty thousand views, that's I would say that's where you start off becoming a micro influencer. Considered by the algorithm. However, you have to post regularly. That might also drop again. Wonderful. So thirty to fifty thousand views. That's the kind of hits that we. A uh, few more questions requesting everybody's indulgence. We're just a little beyond 8 o'clock, but I'm going to request your indulgence for 10 more minutes because we have a lot of interesting questions which have come up. Right. Sarang has a, a pretty cool question. He says, is there a product within LinkedIn through which we can look for talents who are looking for opportunity? Is there a product within LinkedIn itself? Um, there is um, Recruiter, the Recruiter platform, which is similar than um, Sales Navigator. Which is another platform on top of it. It gives features which are um, which are heavily used by by recruiters, and there you find talents better. You get talent suggestions and so on. So you should look into uh, the LinkedIn recruiter product. Um, there's another site like if you just look at jobs, you can use like um, um, uh, look for jobs. So you can see through uh, who is posting jobs, who is offering jobs. So that's that's the other side of it. But these two things, um, these two features are there. Fantastic. The next one, I think, is going to be a trending question, at least in the next two, three months, right? Uh, pretty much you answered it a little bit in this question itself. The question is pretty simple. He says, what's the best way to search for a job in LinkedIn? I think that's a multi-million dollar question. <laughs> so the best way is, well, if you search for a job, the same thing, does your personal brand. Me as a as a as a CEO founder, I'm looking for people. I'm not so much looking anymore for for CVs. I'm actually looking what people can do and what track we could have. And if I look for a growth marketer, if I group, look for a marketer, I look them up on LinkedIn and I see what content they're posting. And if this content is engaging, I see what like what what engagement they have. I see what 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 they think. What see what their audience is. I even see their network. And if I say like, look, I'm selling to um, I'm selling to um, healthcare industry, for example, and this person has already a big network in the healthcare industry. This is the best sales pitch here uh, for to for me to hire him. So build the profile, build the do content, create content, and then go out, look at jobs. Every LinkedIn, I think, every even the basic LinkedIn, you can search for jobs, and then you can see what jobs offerings are there, and then you just reach out to them, say like, "Hey, here's my LinkedIn. Here's a sample of my content. Would would be happy to have a chat, or provide value in the first place." 
Fantastic. So the key, what link, uh, what uh, Florian would like to say is, he's not just looking for CVs, he's looking for people, and he's looking at potential of people to the content that we're putting up on LinkedIn. Right. That's fantastic. Uh, one of the last questions coming from coming up. This is from Jay Kumar, ICICI Bank. Right. How to reach a company profile page to end customers through Google search? As most of the people come through Google search, that's his question. Since most of the people come through Google search, how do I get them to reach company's profile page? I'm not sure if I understand 100. So if Google, like I, this is how I understood it. The, um, if you go, use Google, how do you find how do you find company profiles? Yeah. Right. Um, so simple. You just Google add the company name and just make them. Why do you Google um, search parameter? Search the LinkedIn site and then the company name. Uh, sorry, uh, Florian. The question is, uh, you know, how do you how do we design our page in such a way that people are able to find our company page in LinkedIn through Google search? Okay, you you have you you have to you have to obviously change your settings. In general, in general, the Google crawler will pick up on it. You put, you have to put your personal settings to an open profile. This is important. So even it can be found outside of outside of LinkedIn. Uh, for the company page, I don't think this this um, setting exists. I think it's naturally done. Um, and uh, you basically, obviously, you have a company description in there. Have the link, the the, the company link in there. Fill fill everything out for the company. Have a have a um, amount of followers. And after time, the Google crawler picks up on it and it will be found. There's no no magic pill to this. Okay, so that sort of brings us to the close of, of, of pretty much most of the questions. Once again, uh, thank you so much, uh, Florian. That was really, really sweet of you to spend so much time. All of you in the audience, like I say, uh, thank, thank, thank you. I, I just want just um, thank you very much. I mean, this was a real pleasure to speaking to all of you. I, I'm really, really happy how many people were there and how many people we could provide some um, some the benefit. And also, thank you. Big shout out. To to Venki uh, from uh, Compunet, he uh, he obviously helps me distributing our services in in India, and without him, I wouldn't be here. So thank you very much. <laughs> right from all of us, big thanks. Before we sign off, I like to tell people, please, uh, you know, send in your feedback, talk about us, write about us. Make sure you're among the lucky ten who get that uh, you know one-on-one -on -one session uh, with Florian. And as you fill in your feedback, two things happen. One you get dumped with our ebook, And trust me, it's a great book. Ten of us have written there, right? Three minutes of reading each, which will give you key entrepreneurial insights. Secondly, you will also get to see the uh, YouTube video, right, of this entire talk. We'll try and even get it on text format if possible. So from all of us, all 11 of us, the organizers of Learning Festival, right, or LF as we call it, right, we'd like to say a big thanks. So can the 11 of us, the organizers, can we do it for the audience, right? Can we do that for the audience, right? The guys who brought it all together, Naren, Tamar, Sai, uh, you know, Devain, Manoj, Prasad, Tamar, right? A whole lot of, uh, Mr. Ganesh, Banshi, Sham, Mugili, right? A whole lot of people, right? And you could see, if you go into the site, you'll see all our companies, Mantra, Mr. Keshav, the whole lot of things. So thank you so much, friends. Right, thanks for spending your Friday with us. And I only believe it's about an hour and 15 minutes of your Friday well spent. Cheers. Good luck. We'll be back with more interesting sessions shortly. Please do subscribe. Please do stay with us. We're going to engage you with many more interesting topics very, very, very shortly. This is Jebby John signing off on behalf of the Learning Festival with a big thanks once again to Florian. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.